We've gathered you here together because you're usually siphoned off in different classrooms. And now you're gonna have a shared story or a shared narrative or a shared lesson. And we're gonna try to get more of you all involved in singing and praising the Lord too. So anything that we do here is gonna start with baby steps. And so grow with us. And as with growth, as you can imagine, all of you are, are growing. There come growing pains. And so bear with us as we bear with you and we bear with each other through the grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm not gonna hold you for long today. I just have a few topics that I thought I'd like to share with you all. So I'm your tour guide through the calendars, usually our wonderful and beautiful church calendar, but because I know you don't follow it, sometimes also the Western calendar, which is a little less beautiful, but we use it nonetheless. So I'll talk to you briefly about the yearly Michael holiday, because it just passed, and he's the head archangel amongst all the archangels. Then I wanna to talk to you about what just started on Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving, which was Swama Nabiat, or the fast of the, prophet, fast of the uh, prophets, excuse me. Then, finally, because I know you're more into the Western calendar than our own church calendar, we will discuss that elephant in the room of Thanksgiving. So first and foremost, there could be a lot that is said of the Archangel Michael, but to keep it brief, there are two ideas or concepts that I want you to hold on to. And this is very pertinent because you're all being very noisy during Qurban, and you should be silent during Qurban. You should be realizing what's going on. Even if you don't understand every single word, you should try your best. Or if, if anything, if you're talking at all, it should be to ask someone, hey, what does that mean? Or hey, what does this mean? And because you have the slideshow in there, and in there, and over there, you really, if you strive hard enough, if you put in your effort, can learn what it means. But if you must talk, it should be to clarify, to ask, how can I understand Kaddasi more? How can I understand what's going on more? What can I do in this sanctuary, in this holy place, to be holier and closer to God? So the two things that we can learn from the Archangel Michael that are related to that, that'll help you with that, are obedience and bridling your tongue. Obedience is pretty simple, right? It means listening to the commands of God, one of which are to eat his flesh and to drink his blood and to do so in an orderly fashion. So that's one way in which if you like the Archangel Michael, you'll be like him and be obedient because he's always obedient to God. He's always doing the will of God. The second way that I mentioned is bridling your tongue, which means having control over your words, which is what we just discussed. So rather than talking about the latest soccer game or football game or your favorite Saturday morning cartoon, you can talk about what the Kandasi has prepared you to talk about today. You'll have the whole rest of the day to talk about whatever you want. And of course, it would be great if you talked about God all day. But at least in this time while you're here, try to focus and talk on the Kandase. And in that way, you could be like Michael, who praises God every day and every night, in all times and in all hours. So I mentioned <laughs> last year, there was a funny thing that happened about the date. But this year, thankfully for all of us, the day after Thanksgiving was the beginning of Swam Nabiat, or the fast of the prophets. And it is in this time that we remember what we say every time before the good news or the gospel comes out. Every time it comes out, and today, Father Malaku uh, was with us and helping us out in saying this, and Father Jonas actually read it today, but he was uh, downstairs while Father Jonas was upstairs, and we were able to hear that many prophets and many righteous people wanted to hear the things that you hear. And they wanted to see the things that you see. But they didn't get to see that. They didn't get to hear that because they were before the time of Christ. But all of you, all of us, are in the time of Christ, after the time of Christ. 
in the age or the era or the time or the season of mercy, the year of our Lord. And so we have the opportunity to look forward to and remember and commemorate and honor his birthday or Christmas in preparation with this fast of the prophets. But this is something that only they could look forward to. We're looking forward to it in the sense that we're gonna be celebrating it on the evening of January 6th, which is right before January 7th, the actual day. But they never got that opportunity other than to look forward. We're looking forward to a date that we're looking to in the past because it already happened. We know he's not gonna be born right now. He was born a long time ago. And we know what he did because you learn it in your Sunday school on a daily basis. So one of the ways that you can prepare for celebrating his birth is from now until January 6th or 7th, especially if you're named after some prophets like me, Enoch and Elias or Henoch and Elias, if you're named after Joshua or if you're named after Samuel or if you're named after Joel or if you're named after Malachi or if you're named after Isaiah or Ezekiel or any of the prophets uh, or prophetesses even, Han uh, Anna or, or Hannah, if you're named after any of them or if you're just curious about them, look through the different sections of the 